Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. There are three different fluoride agents commercially available that are in widespread use in many dental practices today. They are sodium fluoride solutions, stannous fluoride solutions, and acidulated phosphate fluoride solutions in gels. Basically, there are two procedures for administering topical fluoride treatments. One is generally applicable to all fluoride solutions. The other is suitable for all your gel preparations. Regardless of the physical form of topical fluoride agent used, be it either the solution or the gel, it is necessary that the treatment be immediately preceded by a thorough prophylaxis to remove all the surface deposits. This will leave the enamel surface freely accessible to your fluoride preparations. The gingiva should also be inspected for irritation at this time. If moderate or severe gingivitis is present, fluoride applications should be postponed until a future appointment when the gingiva is healed. The first method of topical application we will consider today is the cotton roll technique. The essential armamentarium for applying fluoride solutions using this technique is shown here. You should have autoclaved cotton roll holders, autoclaved cotton rolls of both the two and six inch length, cotton tip applicators, some type of cup, either plastic or paper to contain your fluoride, an egg timer, and scissors. Please check at this time to make sure that you have both a right and a left side cotton roll holder and that it is the appropriate size for your patient. Also at this time, you will probably want to fluff the ends of your cotton tip applicator as this will increase the absorption of your fluoride when you're doing your treatment. To isolate the teeth in comfort for the patient and to prevent contact with the saliva, the cotton roll holders are used. This is an especially suitable technique for small children, for patients with unusually shaped arches, and for gaggers. To prepare your cotton roll holders, the first thing you want to do is bevel at a 45 degree angle both the two and the six inch cotton roll. This is to facilitate their placement in the cotton roll holder and retention in the mouth. Once you've completed beveling your cotton rolls, you can insert them into the holder. The long cotton roll should be inserted into the facial prong of your cotton roll holder. The short cotton roll can then be inserted into the lingual prong which you can tell because of the curvature which adapts to the anterior teeth. To insert the cotton roll holder, the patient should be in an upright position. This is to prevent excess saliva and fluoride from passing down the patient's throat. Unless the patient is a gagger, one half of the mouth, either the right or the left hand side, can be isolated at one time. To insert the cotton roll holder, merely retract the patient's cheek and place the holder over the mandibular teeth. The lingual cotton roll should be adjacent to and beneath the lateral margin of the tongue, but should not depress the tongue. Stabilizing the holder with the left hand, secure the cotton roll holder clamp. At this time, you should check and make certain that the cotton roll holder is not pinching or binding the patient's lip. To place the long cotton roll in place, merely twist it slightly toward the gingiva and work it into the mucobuccal fold. The end should adapt 
to the maxillary labial frenum of the patient. This graphic drawing illustrates correct placement of the cotton roll holder in a lingual view. Note that the lingual cotton roll is beside and under the lateral margin of the tongue, adjacent to the lingual alveolar mucosa. Correct placement of the facial cotton roll is depicted here. Note that the facial cotton roll extends in the mucobuccal fold from the mandibular labial frenum to the maxillary labial frenum. Neither the cervical areas of the teeth nor the distal surfaces of the posterior most teeth are obstructed by the cotton roll. After the cotton roll holder has been inserted, place the saliva ejector into the patient's mouth. At this time, you will want to thoroughly dry all the tooth surfaces to remove any excess saliva. You should be very careful here to make certain that all tooth surfaces are dried. The excess saliva will reduce the effectiveness of your fluoride treatment. To apply the fluoride, Nearly dab the fluoride onto the tooth surfaces. You can do this to the mandibular teeth first and then the maxillary. Since I'm using the acidulated phosphate fluoride solution, I'm going to set my timer for a four minute period and will continually apply the fluoride throughout the four minute interval. If during this time I notice that excess saliva is entering my field, it will be necessary for me to remove the cotton roll holders and to begin again. Upon completion of the four minute period, you can remove the saliva ejector and cotton roll holder from the patient's mouth and suction out any of the excess fluoride. The treatment can then be repeated for the opposite side of the mouth. Upon completion, the patient should be instructed not to eat, rinse, or drink for a 30 minute period. This chart is a synopsis of the differences in application technique for each of the three topical fluoride agents. When using a sodium fluoride solution, the fluoride should be applied one time generously to the teeth and then allowed to air dry for three minutes. Both stannous fluoride and acidulated phosphate fluoride solutions employ the use of the four minute continuous technique previously demonstrated. A slightly different technique is used in providing treatment with acidulated phosphate fluoride gels. All these, although these preparations can be applied with the cotton roll technique, perhaps a more convenient technique involves the use of trays. As when you use your fluoride solutions, it is necessary to perform a prophylaxis and gingival inspection prior to treatment. With the tray technique, the armamentarium consists simply of the following items. An egg timer, fluoride gel, your various trays and cotton rolls. I would like to demonstrate for you on the Typodont the selection of the correct tray size. The tray for your patient should be large enough to extend over the distal-occlusal line angle of the posterior most tooth without causing gagging or gingival trauma. As you can see here, this tray would be an incorrect size for a patient with this mandibular arch because it does not fit over the posterior most tooth. Once the correct tray size has been selected, you may proceed by placing a small strip of the fluoride gel into the tray. Usually a strip of about one-fourth of an inch 
is an adequate amount because any excess fluoride could be forced down the patient's throat. For the tray technique, the patient should again be in an upright position. The first thing you want to do is to thoroughly air dry the teeth again to remove all excess saliva. Again, this is a very important step, so you want to make certain that you direct the air tip so that all surfaces are adequately dried. At this time, the trays can be inserted into the patient's mouth. Again, note that only a narrow strip is placed into the tray to prevent any excess fluoride from passing down the patient's throat. To insert the mandibular tray, merely place it over the patient's mandibular tooth. The maxillary tray can then be put into place. At this time, you'll want to place a small cotton roll on the occlusal surfaces of the patient's teeth and direct her to gently close. These will, this will stabilize the tray in the mouth and also prevent the saliva ejector from digging into the floor of the patient's mouth. At this time, your the timer should be set for a four minute period. After the timer has been set, you will want to check again to make certain that the lips of the patient are adequately covering the lower edges of the tray. The patient can then be directed to gently chew on the trays to enable the fluoride to reach every tooth surface. At the end of the four minute interval, the saliva ejectors and trays can be removed from the patient's mouth. Excess fluoride then is again removed from the patient's mouth and she can be instructed not to rinse, eat, or drink for a 30 minute period. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.